today we have a really fun and exciting build to show you. We are going to be installing a lean-to shed and we'll show you the process from start to finish. This design is really popular and has some advantages when compared to your typical roof designs that come to a point or a peak. One advantage is that it can be placed right up against a house, a fence, or other existing structures. And since the roof only slopes in one direction, rainwater will drain away from the building it's resting against. They are also great for side yards where space is normally very limited and can look almost like an addition to the house instead of a shed. This shed is an 8x10, but we can make our buildings just about any size depending on what works best for you. When we are finished, this is going to complement our customer's home so nicely and give some much needed extra storage. The floor structure consists of pressure treated skids sitting on concrete patio blocks, 2x4 floor joists that are 16 inch on center, and then a 3 quarter inch tongue and groove floor decking. This makes for a very heavy duty stout floor. We do have the option to go with 2x6s or even upgrade to a galvanized steel base as well. It really just depends on what your budget and needs are for your shed. If the building is wider than 8 feet, we will use 2x6s on the floor joists instead of 2x4s. We offer a wide variety of options on our sheds, but some of the features on this one include a garden door, two windows, and a workbench. It also has a radiant barrier roof decking that helps keep the building much cooler in the summertime. I will show you more on that later in the video. After we get the floor decking secured, it's time to get working on the high wall. Because it's going right up against the house, we will attach the siding and trim, then stand it up and get it nailed into place. This will make the wall pretty heavy, but I think with the three of us we can manage. The high wall is right about eight and a half feet tall, which will make the inside of the shed nice and spacious and give plenty of headroom. Having the extra height will also give more options for workbenches and shelves to be added down the road. Installing the siding and trim to the wall before standing it up can be tricky. We have to account for the correct overhang and overlap of the materials, so it all ties in together properly when we install the rest of the siding and trim. Luckily, all of our crews have years of experience and take great pride in their work, so this is not a problem. You can see we are taking our time and carefully checking our measurements. Up it goes. That wasn't too bad. Now we can get the other wall stood up and nailed in place and keep moving right along. All of the walls are 2x4s, 16 inch on center, and the roof frame will have 2x6s. The door and window placement were chosen by the customer ahead of time, so you can see we are double checking to make sure we are building everything according to the plans. Everything is coming together great and going really smooth, just how we like it. With so many parts and different materials, it's not that uncommon to have minor hiccups here and there. But we always carry some extra materials just in case something unforeseen comes up. There was a knot, it's okay. Yeah. 
As we are putting in the roof joists, Noah is taking his time and planing each 2x6 with a speed square before getting it nailed into place. This will make sure the angle of the roof remains continuous and consistent. You can see as we keep progressing on the shed, we are using our standard vertical siding. We do offer several different types of horizontal sidings if you want to get a more specific match with your house. This building is in a side yard that really isn't going to be seen much, so it's understandable that our customer chose the vertical siding. It really just comes down to what works best for you and which options you choose to go with. If you have used a router before, you know it can be a bit of a messy job and get you pretty dusty. But one little trick we've learned over the years is if you keep as much of your head and body above it, it will keep the dust off of you. There's the radiant barrier roof decking I mentioned earlier in the video. It has a foil back material attached and helps reflect the rays of the sun, keeping the building much cooler in the summertime. We have display models set up at our showroom and it makes quite a difference when going into a shed that has this versus one that doesn't. It's a really great option if you like the idea of your building staying a little cooler in those hot summer months. If you are enjoying the video, let us know in the comments. Do you like this roof design? Should the shed have horizontal siding to blend in better with the house? We will be installing architectural shingles on the shed. But before the shingles go on, we lay down a synthetic felt paper. This will act as a moisture barrier between the shingles and roof decking.
It's time to install the garden door. This one is 36 inches wide. It's made of fiberglass and is insulated as well. It will have three heavy duty hinges and comes with a keyed locking handle. We do have a 48 inch wide door, double doors, and even roll up doors if you need something a little bigger. Glass can also be added into the doors to give a more decorative look. Just getting the workbench put in. We went to put our top casing on and it was a little bit short, but luckily we had some extra trim. So we had to make a new top piece and now we're putting it on.
Just getting the last of the painting all wrapped up. Building is looking really nice. We are all wrapped up. Our building turned out so nice. Our workbench inside. We're just waiting on our paint to dry. That'll blend in a little better. See, it ties in so nicely with the house.